Race can be defined in two ways. Scientifically, race as an evolutionary concept. Simply, evolution is a process by which species differentiate and exploit niches. The three types of evolution are divergent, convergent, and parallel. Natural selection dictates the ways in which species evolve, and there are four types of natural selection, directional, disruptive, sexual, and stabilizing. There are, of course, indicators such as fixation index or analysis of molecular variance measurements that races exist, but we generally define races as geographically isolated populations with significant variation that show distinct evolutionary lines according to phylogenetic tests and rarely or never mate with each other. Races or subspecies are loosely defined categories which have often contradictory uses or definitions depending upon the application and thus it becomes important that we remain vigilant about how races or subspecies relate to evolution as a process. In other words, races are divergent populations of species, and Homo sapiens sapiens haven't met this criteria in at least 12,000 years, since the advent of agriculture and large societies. Race as socially constructed. Race as a measure of qualitative differences. The other conceptualization of race is that of which social constructivists and race realists propose, which is a measure of variation and nothing more. Because we can group populations into rough clusters based on genetic markers or phenotypic characteristics, and because we can recognize circumstantial, arbitrary, and superficial characteristics of members of geographically distant populations, race exists according to this position. The problem with this, of course, is that it's built upon a foundation of evolving socially fabricated assumptions and associations, as I've already noted. It presumes that superficial characteristics come with other, deeper characteristics, such as lower IQ or behavioral tendencies like being prone to violence. It confuses culture with biology, asserting that biology dictates culture, and this is part of the reason for disparities in life outcomes and social conditions around the world. Our genetics do influence our behavior. Our biology does influence our culture. And when a layman tries to rebut these claims about truly racial characteristics and biological determinism, they often construct self-detonating arguments because they don't really know what they're talking about. They just know that the truth can't be as simple as the race realists or social constructivists are proffering. When critically examined, though, it is obvious that the so-called common sense used to assume such relationships as social constructivists and race realists do is nonsensical and contradicted by the scientific evidence we have today. But honestly, the conversation isn't even this simple. See, race or subspecies are terms that are applied differently based upon the situation. It's important to recognize that outside of conservation efforts focused on endangered species, though, these terms are increasingly becoming consistent and defined in evolutionary terms. And so this is how we'll be measuring the alternative hypothesis claims and definitions. And this is where the struggle really lies, in trying to provide simple explanations for complicated phenomena, in trying to elucidate the seemingly contradictory and highly nuanced science accurately. For an admitted layman such as myself, this has turned into a nightmare. I've spent almost 12 months of time, a full year, reviewing, digesting, and struggling to comprehend this topic, and I've still got more questions than answers. But I've learned enough to know that the alternative hypothesis, impressive as it may be to individuals that aren't really familiar with the topic, is really just a rehashing of scientific racism founded upon biological determinism and with a sprinkling of cherry-picked statistics on top. The arguments are so tenuous, the logic so contrived, and the bias so blatant that not a single aspect of the alternative hypothesis can withstand rigorous evaluation. Before I carry on and actually introduce you to the alternative hypothesis arguments, I think I should sum up all the things I've covered in the preceding material. 1. There are two types of racism overt and soft, and social constructivism falls under the latter category. 2. I consider social constructivism to be an instance of soft racism because it advances racist logic and it accomplishes two important tasks for the race realist position. A. It asserts race is real in Homo sapiens sapiens, 
and presumes that measured differences arise along these truly racial lines. And b. It provides justifications in a liberal light for enduring socioeconomic injustices. 3. Race is incomprehensible and incoherent if only assumed in genetic or physical terms. In fact, it's not supported. When we mention physical variation, we're commenting on the truly fantastic emergent properties of our genes, not race. 4. Race in our species is not supported by scientific or evolutionary understandings of the concept, but is socially real, and is prevalent and enduring because of profound misunderstandings of biology and because of a long history of such. In this sense, race is socially real, being comprised of an ever-evolving and inconsistent constellation of assumptions and relations associated with superficial, genotypic, and phenotypic variation. 5. We're about to begin the debunking of the alternative hypothesis, and a useful framing for approaching this task is that the alternative hypothesis arguments are formed upon scientific racism, biological determinism, and cherry-pick statistics. Let's begin. Meet me over at part 5.